Thanks a lot for joining me here today. What I'm going to talk about is using the anti micro program to set up advanced power management on the PC. This is something I just uh, did because I switched from uh, console to PC. I've joined the PC master race. I got to be honest, it's amazing. I really like it. So let's take a look at, uh, at how we're going to go through this here. So moving over to it we see we've got my xbox controls here and first of all this is the way that i've kind of set it up so that i don't really have to remap much in game so i, I just i disable the left trigger where the clicking which left sorry not left trigger left stick clicking which is where the boost is, will remain but i remap that to the left trigger and the left bumper both and then the oh sorry we're looking at the wrong profile actually my bad over to this one the pc one so you see now we've corrected it there so you see the two there the um both tr bumper and left trigger have a boost drift button the left trigger is still target selector it's just on the back paddle we've got power management um, engine on the back um and weapons on the right side with my countermeasure lbc remap to the countermeasure on the upper right paddle and then pretty much everything else in stock except my shunt button is on the X, that's the real only kind of change to it. So what am I doing in game now to sort of remap things? In game, it's kind of a different story. Um, so in anti-micro, we'll get to that profile a little. First, what we have to show is I'm on, um, you have to be on mouse and keyboard first when you do this. You go into your, oops, not customization there. You go into your controls. And you need to remap uh, in flight. You need to look at the keyboard and mouse and go right down to maximize engine power. You see, I've put them as seven, eight, nine. They they replace some uh, comps, real quick options, basically. So it seemed pretty unnecessary to have them there. So seven, eight, and nine. And then we look at anti micro. We see that my power button power management now the d-pad has been reset in here to seven eight and nine now when you do this you need to uh, make sure you're seeing your controller when it's in there it'll show up and you want to make a profile independent for it i've called it apm only game controller and you want to save that and you always want to have that loaded in your controller on before you launch star wars squadron to get it to register so because i've put seven eight nine d-pad here that will be bound to 789 on the keyboard. That's what anti micro is doing. It's replacing the keyboard, the controller buttons pressing with actual keyboard buttons. So it's registering it as a seven rather than a D pad left. Now, what I've noticed, I'm using the Xbox Series 2 controller. What I've noticed is some funny business with this where the D pad, for whatever reason, was still registering. I was seeing some odd situations where I was seeing a couple of pips left, uh, six and six pips, which are these, these situations you really shouldn't see. So it's almost like there was a combination of the two. So I went into controller, and in the controller, I actually unbound um, the basic <laughs> power stuff so it can't even register. But what I'm seeing here now is that it's actually not you get a weird situation where rather than getting those odd pip situations your whole thing will sort of like freeze up so that's almost worse in some ways it makes you kind of come to this dead stop though so it does throw people off it's like when the ping wheel kind of comes up and it's sort of you can't do anything else or targeting wheel any sort of wheel like that it kind of takes over for a second that's like what is happening for a split second but it really messes everything up too when you're in the middle of power management or locking or stuff like that so that's the trade-off I'm seeing there with this with this but you get advanced power management so you can you know have effectively better power management with the controller so this is how I'm using anti micro this is basically from what I've talked to tonight and different people about and how I have it set up so you can either you know have those weird pips in there or have that little bit of freezing that will happen occasionally maybe once a game usually not a big deal time but occasionally it will happen I haven't quite figured out exactly when but those sort of are your uh your two options so yeah 
that's basically it. That's my rundown on the anti micro program and how to use it to set up advanced power management in Star Wars Squadrons. Now I did um, mess around trying to separate the boost and the drift button, and I I did not have sex sex. I did not have success with it in the uh, with the Series Two controller. Uh, I talked to Fengar a bit. He said this was an issue too. I tried doing the same thing. Basically, using anti micro, you need to unbind whatever controller you're applying as a keyboard bind in the controller settings. It wants to override the basic, it will override some of those keyboard settings, but there's some funny business involved and that's why you wanna unbind them on the controller side. So that's the basic rundown of it. So let me know down below if you have any questions, any comments, if I've got something wrong, I'd love to hear that. If you think I should try out a different program from binding, this is with the Series 2 controller, what I found so far. And like I said, you really can't, because of those double bindings, you could not separate boost and drift using anti-micro. So that's that's what I'm seeing with it anyway. I kind of tried to mess around and see if it was possible. It was not for me with the Series 2 controller. I might try with the Xbox standard and see what can be done there later. I'm working this way right now. So thanks a lot for checking out this video. I'm Time Bomb. You guys are awesome. And I will catch you guys later. A boom, boom.